there and welcome back so in this series we are going to learn compose multi-platform and kotlin multi-platform from grounds up so i will structure a playlist for learning this new technology from grounds up so a basic experience with programming is required other than that you can learn everything from this playlist so what is kotlin multi-platform so kmp lets developers share code between different platforms like android ios desktop and potentially the web so this reduces the amount of code you need to write and maintain. So KMP allows you to write shared code for common tasks and also specific code for each platform when needed. So it supports Kotlin Native, which compiles Kotlin code to run directly on devices without extra softwares. You can also use Kotlin with other platform-specific languages like Swift with easy Gradle setup and many supporting libraries. So KMP is a grid for creating apps that works on multiple platforms, especially mobile apps for both Android and iOS and also desktop. So what is Compose Multi-Platform? So Compose Multi-Platform builds on top of Kotlin Multi-Platform to specifically tackle user interfaces. So imagine writing the design and look of your app just once in Kotlin code, then that same code can create beautiful and functional user interfaces for Android, iOS, and desktop, and even the web, which is still in early stages. So it saves time and lets you focus on the core features of your app, not rewriting the UI for each platform. In order to get started, we have to set up our development environment. So we'll follow the documentation guide to get everything learning smoothly. So the first case which we require here is Android Studio. So this is going to be our main IDE, which you'll use to build and test application except for iOS application. Alternatively, you can use Fleet. So in order to install Android Studio, you can follow the link here, or you can directly go to JetBrains Toolbox. So you can go to this uh, website or just search for JetBrains Toolbox. And actually you can install this application here. So you can see I'm using a Linux operating system. So if you want to change here, you can just change any type and select yourself uh, an operating system that you require. So for this case, download it, unpack it and uh, install it. You install the JetBrain toolbox. You're going to get an interface like this where you can manage all IDEs from JetBrains. So you can see there are a bunch of IDEs here. So I have already installed the fleet and Android Studio. So you can just touch it here and install it. And basically you can manage, for example, here I have an, a new update, so I'm not going to update this for now. And also this JetBrain toolbox was written 100% using a uh, Kotlin multi-platform. So you can see actually this technology works. Okay, so the next case here, if you have a Mac OS, then you can install Xcode to write iOS specific code and run an iOS application. Since I don't have a Mac OS, I will skip this step, but will be able to write the code for all platform but will not be able to test the application. Other than that, we are just good to go. Okay, so the next case, you can check if you have installed JDK by running this command here. You can see we have Java version. So you can just launch a terminal. So for example, here, I can just call Java. And you can see here, actually, we have this version installed inside our machine. So if not, then you can just follow this link here and actually install the JDK. So after you install everything and you have Android Studio, the next case is to install this Kotlin multi-platform plugin. So we can just directly go to Android Studio and see how we can do this. So when you launch Android Studio, so if this is the first time, then you are going to get this interface here. So the first case, you can just directly go here to plugin and here in uh, marketplace. So you can just select this marketplace here and you can search for a Kotlin multi-platform. So you can see I have already installed this. So directly just you can install this Kotlin multi-platform. And also we have to install another one, which is just the Compose multi-platform plugin that is going to add the IDE support for Kotlin multi-platform. So directly you can just use this and actually you're just good to go. Okay, so finally, if you have a Mac OS, you can install KDoctor, which is a program specific for checking if everything is set up correctly for development in Mac OS with KMP. So you can see here, you can just go directly to documentation here. You can see you can check your environment. So you install the uh, KDoctor, which actually works on Mac OS. So you can follow this command here. Then after that, you can just call KDoctor. Then KDoctor is going to spill out a lot of information to check if something is not actually uh, running correctly. So you can see 
whenever you get this then that means it has failed and whenever you have a check mark that means everything is successfully set up so you can follow here for possible issues and set up okay so now after everything is set up correctly you can easily now create a new project so for example whenever you click new project and if you have installed the plugin, you can see here we have these two templates for creating a Kotlin multi-platform application. But recently, until now, you cannot create from this uh, using this uh, shortcut here because there are a bunch of setups which are not actually ready for this case. So we can use a pro, uh, Kotlin multi-platform wizard in order to create our multi-platform application. So here is how we can easily do it. So you can just go to the web browser and search for Kotlin multi-platform wizard. Okay, so inside here, our Kotlin multi-platform wizard, we can easily create our project. So here you can provide the project name. So for example, here you can just call this hello. And basically you can just change this here. So you can see you have to pass in your project ID. So for those who are coming from Android uh, background, you can easily know this one is really crucial whenever you publish your application to a uh, Play Store. So for this case, you can just change this to Hello World, for example. So everything is set up correctly. So you can choose what application you want to uh, actually target. So for example, here we want to target Android and iOS. And if you want to share the UI with Compose multi-platform, which is actually in beta for iOS, and actually it is stable in desktop. So for this case, we can just choose this desktop with Compose multi-platform UI framework. Now here in the web, we are still in alpha. So basically we are not going to focus in that for now. And basically you can create the server using Ktor technology. So for a case, we are just going to focus on these three. So Android, iOS, and desktop. So for now, you can just click download here. Okay, so now after you download the project, you can easily extract from uh, the folder where you like. And basically, you can click here to open. And basically, now we have this hello world, which we have written. So we can just select here and actually uh, open up the application. So Gredo is going to set up everything for us. Okay, so when Gredo successfully uh, imports the project, basically, you're going to get the app structure like this one. And here we have a readme where it's going to explain some specific things so i'm going to explain everything step by step so for this case let's just close this and basically here we have the compose app and i'm going to change here to project in order to view it so the main application where we are going to be focusing inside here is this compose app here whenever you open up here you can see we have several uh, packages and these packages are going to target specific applications so for example here we are targeting ios here we are targeting desktop and here basically we are targeting Android and these are just specific to each application. So for example, inside here Android, we have actually the manifest. If you're an Android developer, actually you understand what a manifest is. So this is like a, a contract that Android OS is going to read first in order to understand about that application. And for that case, you can see we have, for example, here the main activity that we can easily use to call it here. So the major thing which we are going to be writing our code inside here is this common main. And here is where we are going to write a lot of our code. And basically, whenever you open up here, you can see we have this function, which is called an app. And this is like an entry point to our Compose multi-platform application. Basically, everything is going to call this. So when you go, for example, from the main activity from Android, you can see we are just calling this app here. And basically this app here is going to provide us with all the dependencies which we require, for example, specifically from each platform, which we're going to see whenever we write our applications. The next case here, you can see we have this desktop main. And basically inside here, we can write a desktop specific codes, which we want to customize it directly. And also here, you can see we are calling this app function here. The next case here is the iOS main. And basically here you can see we have the main view controller and actually we are calling this main view controller and because I'm not running inside a Mac OS, we're just going to get some errors. And since I'm not going to be building iOS applications directly from Android Studio, so this is not going to cause us any problems. So we can compile from Android and desktop. But for iOS, you have to use Xcode in order to compile it and run the application. But you can write the code and actually yeah, use a Mac OS whenever you want to run your application. 
you have to use this iOS uh, app in order to run it. So you can see this is just an Xcode uh, project structure which you can use. So for example, if you're in macOS, you can just right click this and actually open in here you are going to have Xcode and actually open it in Xcode and continue your applications. Okay, so the another important thing here is let's switch to Android view here for a moment. And you can see we have Gradle scripts, which is going to help us to manage our dependencies. So for example, if you want to make a network call and we want to use a library to help you to fetch this data, basically you are going to use Ktor in order to do this. So you have to add the dependencies. And this is just here where we are going to do this library versions where we can declare the libraries and the versions inside here and another case is you can see this module compose app is where we are going to be changing here so we have specifically source sets like android main dependencies which are going to be targeting android specifically which are not available in multi-platform for example and basically we're going to change a lot inside here the common main dependencies where we're going to add several uh, dependencies that are common throughout the, uh, uh, the the platforms so ios desktop and also android and other case here is we have this android which are just specifically for android and this one is specifically for uh, desktop okay so the next case here is to try to run our application so let's switch back to uh, project structure here and let's directly go to our common main let's open up here our app okay so to run our application in android studio here so for example if you want to run it directly to android then basically you can use an emulator or you can easily use an android actual phone so if you don't have an actual phone basically you can use an emulator so here is how you can do so you can go here to device manager you can see at the right hand side here and basically I have already created here several uh, devices. So for example, you can just click this at new device and you can create a future device. And basically here you can select any type of device which you want. So for example, we can just select this pixel fold and now you can just click next. And what you have to do is to select an image that is going to be specifically for that particular android so you can just download here to have the android version and after that then you can click finish here in order to download it since i already set up this i'm just going to close this so we have here several types and if you have an actual device basically you can easily just use this device but you have to enable debugging for android if you have a physical phone basically you can just go directly to my phone and go to the settings and basically here you can just go directly to a build number and this build number here you can click it seven times so you can see here that are uh, no need because i'm already a developer after you click this seven times you are just going to have the developer options so for this case i'm just going directly here and look for developer options you can see and this one is differently according to devices so my developer option is inside here the systems and I'm going to select these developer options. Then what you have to do is to enable USB debugging. After you enable this, then basically you are going to see this inside the list of devices here. And if you are not seeing this after you enable uh, USB debugging, then you can easily select this troubleshoot here and click rescan here. It's going to rescan for devices and actually set up. So make sure that you have connected this using a USB inside your application, inside your uh, computer. So to run our application in desktop, for example, we have to create a configuration for it. So you can just directly go here to compose app. Let's click here, edit configuration. And we want to create a new configuration. So here for our application, you can just select this. So for our case, we're just going to select this Gradle because we want to build for a desktop. Now let's click apply here and click OK. Let's try to run this. Now we have these two options. So the compose app and this one desktop. So for this case, let's try to run it. And now we can see we have our desktop. And actually, let's go directly inside here and open up our device. You can see we are running here an Android application. And actually here we have our desktop. So for this case, we can just click here, click me. And actually it's working and here you can click click me and it's actually working also here 
Okay, so if you're new to Jepa Compose, actually this code can be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to explain it and we're going to write it step by step so that you can understand it. So let me just bring out this. You can see here we have our application. So this essentially is a state. Actually, it keeps track of this state. And for example, here at default, we have this to false. And basically in that case, we have a collapsed view. And here we have a layout. This is the layout that arranges things in a vertical sequenced format. And that is just a column. So whenever you see a column, basically things are going to be arranged in a vertical sequenced format. So for now, we have only a button that is inside our view. And this is happening because of a state. Here we have an animated visibility. So animated visibility is like an if statement that is going to help us to show only the content according to that particular condition. So for example, here we have this show content. At now, it is in a false state. So for this case, we are not showing this particular data here. So whenever we click this here, for example, then this content is going to animate inside here and show it or reveal it itself because here now the state we have changed it by clicking this button so you can see we have here the on click so whenever we click this we are going to negate that state and for a case we are just going to reinitialize it back to true and for that case the animated visibility is going to say hey okay now i can show the content and basically here we have the image and the text composable now, if we click again, then we're going to negate our uh, state again back to false and actually hide the data. So this is just as simple as that because Jepa Compose is a declarative a UI framework. And basically, let's write a simple composables that we can easily see by ourselves. Okay, now let's just delete everything here. So essentially, I want to create here a variable. So let's create a variable. And actually, let's call this uh, country. And you can write your specific country. So for this case, I'm going to display a hello world text. And in Jepa Compose, you can create this by using a text composable. So to do this, you have to pass in here the text, which is essentially the uh, main uh, part that you are required just to pass here. So you can just write hello world. And here, basically, you can just pass in your country. Now let's try to run this and see. Basically now let's go directly here and select our Compose app and we want to run it inside our application. So here we have our application rendered and you can see hello world from Tanzania. Congratulations guys on setting up your development environment and creating your first Kotlin multi-platform project. So in the next video we'll learn how to build a simple UI using Compose multi-platform and learn basic Compose building blocks. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Hoodlab for more tutorials. So see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.